Hey guys, welcome back. I'm gonna start wet sanding this uh, piece of trim for the passenger door on the 59 Impala. Um, if you can see, there are quite a bit of uh, scratching and stuff in it. So I'm gonna start with a 500 grit wet sanding paper. I've had it soaking here in the water. So basically what I'm gonna do is just take 500 and I wanna go the long ways of the molding. I don't wanna go this way, I wanna go this way, okay? And basically I'm going to sit here and wet sand this with 500 grit until I think I have all the marks out of this molding. And then I'm gonna work my way up, all the way up to 2000 grit. So I'm just gonna show you a little spot here, then I'm gonna stop the camera, because I don't think you guys wanna watch me wet sand for the next hour, or however long it's gonna take me. And you can see how it's dulling it up. So I need to keep going until all those little nicks are gone everywhere. So it's gonna take me a while. So let me sand this for a while off camera with this uh, 500 grit. And then I'll come back and show you what it looks like after the 500 grit is done. Okay, I'm done with the 500 grit. And you can see I've gotten quite a few of the imperfections out. There's a little one right here. I'm sure you can see it right there. So what I'm gonna do now is go with 800 grit and then 1200, then 15, and then we'll see how it polishes after 1500. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand this all the way up to 1500, and then we're gonna put it on the polishing wheel and see what happens. Okay, I've gotten this wet sanded up to 1500. It still might need some more wet sanding, but I wanna put it on the polisher and see what it does. So we're gonna go over here to the, I just put a polishing wheel on my grinder because I don't actually have a polishing buffer um I, i'll probably get one eventually i don't i just don't do a lot of it so i usually don't have a reason for it um i have two different sticks here we're going to start with the gray because this gray is a fast cut compound used to prevent light scratches and restore a natural look of copper brass stainless steel and steel and aluminum and then we'll use the green second and this compound it says it's used for high polished finishes on uh, copper, brass, stainless steel, and steel. So we're gonna use the gray one first. And we are going to turn this on. And we're gonna take this stick and we're gonna rub it on the wheel a little bit. Get some on there. Now, I put a cardboard on the wall because this stuff flings everywhere and it sticks. So I like to kind of keep my walls from getting filthy. And we're just gonna work on it see what it does and once again you want to go with the with the molding same way that you sanded it And you can see it's starting to shine up. Let's put a little green on there and see what it looks like with the green. Um, this takes a while. It's not something that's real fast. Let's throw a little green on here. Ideally, it would be good to have two different wheels. So eventually, like I said, I probably will buy a buffer. And then I could put one wheel with one compound and then the other wheel with another compound. Now you can see what that looks like, how shiny that's getting. It's hard to see in the camera with the reflect with the um, the lights above me. But let's take it over here and see if we can compare it 
to the back piece right here. So let's compare it to this one the best we can with what we have to light wise. We'll wipe this off a little bit. And if you look here, that's pretty much about as good as it looks from the pieces that came from California. So basically what I'm gonna do here is pull my bench over here. I'm gonna sit down and polish this until the whole piece looks like this end that we just did. So I'm not gonna record that because it's gonna be extremely boring. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make it all look like that. So I'll be back in a little bit and show you what the final result looks like. It's, it might have a few little imperfections when I'm done, but it's gonna look pretty good. And unfortunately, even on the car, there's a spot, few spots that aren't perfect, especially when you start putting this stuff on and you're handling it with your hands and all that stuff, it ends up getting a little bit of scratching on it, but not bad. So, all right, I'm gonna polish that, sit down and polish it and I'll be back. It's not gonna be a long video, just figured I'd show you the process. It's basically the same thing as wet sanding and buffing a car. You basically start with a lower grit sandpaper and you work your way up until you're, I stopped at 1500. So I did 500, 800, 1200 and 1500. And I stopped there. You could go more. I could have rubbed the 1500 longer. I could have done the 1200 longer. You know, the longer you do it, the better it's gonna turn out. Um, but I think I got it to where it's gonna look match the rest of the car. Okay, this is where we're at after the gray compound. It's getting real close. We just have fine scratches left. Um, I gotta let it cool off for a couple of minutes because it gets warm. Now, another thing to think, to uh, know that this is stainless steel from a 59 Impala, okay? The quality of stainless from the 50s and 60s cars are way better than the cars from the 70s and 80s. So if you have like 80s trim and you're trying to get a mirror finish polish out of it, it's gonna be really, really difficult and it's gonna take a lot more time, um, especially on the 80s cars because they use like a clear anodized coating over top of their molding. So in theory, you need to sand that completely off the molding before you can even think about polishing it. And then the quality of the stainless is not as good as the quality obviously from the 50s and 60s. So keep that in mind too, depending on what you're polishing. The older the vehicle, the better it's gonna turn out because it's just better. So, all right, I'm gonna let that cool off for a minute. Then I'm gonna start hitting it with the green. Maybe I'll put it back on the tripod for a minute while we start hitting it with the green. Okay, let's put some green on here. Put the gray away, I think we're done with that. Now, I'm gonna try to go both directions with it just to see what it does. I'm gonna try to go right to left and see if it actually makes a difference or not. Usually I go long ways, but it might be all right to go both ways. Let's just try it like in the middle. Yeah, it, it doesn't really, I don't know, maybe it doesn't matter. Yep, works better going this way. I don't know, it's so hard to show this stuff on camera. But if you could see how much brighter it is right here and smoother than it is on the sides. So it definitely works better to go the length of the molding. Um, just a little harder to do. This is a skinny wheel. This wheel's only about a half inch wide. If I had a nice one inch wide wheel and a nice big buffer, um, I don't really feel like spending like $500 on a buffer because I just don't do enough of it. I might go to Harbor Freight and get their biggest one that they have for the few times a year that I polish a couple moldings. 
um, because to typically to polish this whole car, that's probably me by myself. You're probably looking at two weeks of work. And it's for me, it's more beneficial to send it out and get it done by professionals that A, have better equipment that can do it quicker, and B, that's two weeks of my time I don't have to waste on doing this when I could be doing something more important like the body work, putting it together, or something like that. So you gotta kind of weigh your options. If you're on a tight budget, you don't have a lot of money to spend, then I totally agree. Do it yourself, polish it yourself. If you have time and you don't have a lot of money, that's what you should do. You should definitely polish your own molding. You know, if you're if you don't have a lot of time, but you have a bigger budget to spend, just send the stuff out. Because for what they charge, I mean the quality that they give you is is pretty pretty damn good. Plus, this gets really boring. Unless you like doing this stuff, you know, then I don't really personally like doing it. I do it when I need to. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hit this whole molding with green. Then I will come back and show you what it looks like. I'm gonna do this little corner down here. But you can see it's it definitely makes it shiny as can be. And very, 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 very few imperfections. So, all right, I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, I'm done with the green. Now, what I like to do is I like to take some aluminum and stainless polish. I have some of this. This stuff's made by McGuire. And I take some of this stuff and I rub it on the molding. Just a decent amount. And then I run it on the wheel one last time. And then after that, we'll wipe it down and we'll get a good look at it. Now, this is not my car, this 59 Impala. Um, if this were my car, I would be doing all these myself because I like to do as much on my own vehicles as I can. But when you're doing a car for somebody else, sometimes this isn't cost effective for you because you could be making money doing something else. You know what I mean? Rather than sitting there doing that. If it's your own vehicle, like I do, my, when I do my own vehicles, I do all this stuff myself because A, it's cheaper for me, and B, I'm not on a time frame, I, you know what I mean? It doesn't really matter if it takes me a little bit longer to get something done. So that's what it's gonna look like when it's done. Obviously, there's a little bit of smudging on there from the compound, but you can see it right there. It looks awesome. I'm really happy with that. So I'm going to finish it up and we'll just kind of set it on the car door tonight and see what it looks like. Okay, let's go set it on the car door and see what it looks like. Yeah. Once this door goes together, I can get the uh, car finish buffed out and be done with it. hitting on here well I'm not gonna fight with it right now I'm just gonna kind of hold it on there and show you but I think that's a really good match to what we got from getting polished back from polishing so I'm happy with that I think that looks good so all right I'm not gonna fight with that right now might have a old staple or something on the back side of it from the felt so all right guys well that's going to end this video nothing uh real uh exciting figured i'd show you a quick process of how i do the buffing of the stainless steel um 
I always wear glasses too, because that stuff flings everywhere. Look at the floor over here and the bottom of the cardboard. That's all just from that one little molding. So it's a mess. So basically now I can get this passenger door together, get the window in and get the window working. The rear quarter window on this side um, is going up and down a little slow. Something's binding a little bit. I have to figure out what that is. Driver side windows are working perfectly. So I gotta get these passenger ones working. And then after that, um, I have to put the defrost vent in, the hose for the defrost vent. That just came last week. So I gotta uh, cut and put this in. Um, something's going on with the steering wheel. The um, horn's not working yet. And it's a little tight when you turn it. So I gotta figure out what's going on with the steering wheel. Um, put the vent in, put the passenger door together. I'm waiting on the clips for the uh, front inner fender wells, the rubber splash guards. Those gotta get put in. I gotta mount the wheel skirts on the car and then basically just run over it with the buffer one more time and uh, clean it real good. And I believe it's out of here. I'm gonna bleed the brakes one more time. Uh, just to make sure there's no more air in the lines because it's all new lines and master cylinder and all that stuff is new. So I want to bleed that one more time. Um, I think that's it. I got to adjust this door molding a little bit more. Um, basically just small minor things now for the most part. Oh, brake lights aren't working. Got to figure out the brake lights. I have power going to the brake light switch. When I push the pedal, power is coming out of the switch. So somewhere after the switch to the back end, something's not working. Um, the running lights are working. Headlights are working. So I got to figure out if it's just a ground issue or something like that. So, all right, well, that's going to end this video. This weekend, I plan on getting the passenger side together, getting those windows working, getting that um, soundproofing on the inside of the door and stuff like that. And then... Uh, I'll show you guys how I'm going to mount the skirts. We'll make a video on that. Um, other than that, that's pretty much about it. And probably, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, within the next week, I can get this thing finished and out of here. So if you guys are interested in seeing more projects, when this leaves, I have a 64 Impala convertible coming. Um, it was restored probably 25 years ago, maybe even longer. I don't know. It's been a long time. And uh, at the time that was fixed, they didn't make one piece floor pans. So it's individual panels that went in there. The guy, my, my friend who owns it wants me to put a one piece floor in. So we're going to do a whole one piece floor in it. Um, I'll video that. Um, we're going to strip the car down to bare metal. We're going to body work it and repaint the car. It did have quarters at one time. I have no idea how they were installed, how well they were installed. Won't know obviously until we strip it down to bare metal. Um, but we're going to be doing, it's going to come here with no frame on it, I believe. I think he's going to bring it on a body cart. Um, I'm hoping he brings it on a body cart because then I can do the floor pans on the body cart. We'll have to uh, make some bracing probably unless he does it at his shop for the door jams and stuff so the car doesn't flex when it's not on the frame. Still have to talk to him about that. Um, I have a rotisserie, but I have a car on it right now. So I'm going to be purchasing another rotisserie. The rotisserie I have, I made a long, long time ago. And it, uh, it doesn't jack the car up and down. So I'm actually just going to buy one that jacks the car upside, up and down and everything. I'm going to use it on his car for the first car. Um, because I'm going to paint the floors and everything. And, and it'll be really nice to paint the body and the floors on that rotisserie. And then I'll paint the doors and the fenders and hood and trunk lid separate. And then we can, uh, um, maybe I'll even have him take the body. Maybe we'll put it back onto the body cart and have him take the body. And then he can come back for the doors and stuff. I'm not sure. I haven't really discussed it with him. I don't know if he's the one that wants to disassemble the body or if I am or what. I know he's taking the interior out and the motor and all that, I believe. So we'll figure it out. But we have that project coming. I need to get this uh, this white Chevy Dually finished up. I'm going to be body working. I'm going to be guide coating and reprimering that bed, hopefully on Sunday if the weather's decent, because I really can't sand in here much with this car sitting in here. So if it's decent out, I'll roll the bed outside and uh, 
I'll block sand it down, guide coat it and block sand it down. Then we can get the last primering done on that so that we can start getting that ready for paint. That's a pearl white paint job. Um, I still have to do a spray out of it to see how close it matches the old pearl white that was on the truck. But as long as that all goes well, that bed, tailgate, fenders, all that stuff should be ready for paint in the next week or so. So I can get the whole back of the truck painted, move that over into the back building, get the truck itself over here when this leaves. And that body work's just about done on the body too. It's, I believe it's been sanded and primer twice. So we'll probably block it down and maybe do it one more time just to be sure. And then, uh, so that really should only take a couple days to get that prepped and then we can get that in the booth and get that painted. And then at that point, I just gotta put it back together and I can leave. So, all right guys, tons of projects coming. I have an R59 back there, a hard top that needs to get done this summer. Um, I have my own personal 62 Impala convertible back there that I don't know when I'm gonna get to that. Um, I just have a ton of stuff coming. I have, uh, what is it, like a Denali or a Tahoe or something like that coming. I'm gonna be painting from the body line up black, and I believe the rest of it's silver or white, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna be doing the top of that. So there's gonna be tons of videos coming car related. I've been slacking a little bit on them because I have a ton of arcade games I've been working on on my other channel. I got kind of uh, swamped with a bunch of jobs to do on that. So, all right, guys, that's going to end this video. If you're liking what you're seeing, please like, subscribe, share, hit the thumbs up. If you're interested in seeing these future projects, please consider subscribing. It doesn't cost anything. Just hit the subscribe button. That would be awesome. And I appreciate it. And I will see you guys later.